Mortuary Poland, and many perilous, unsuccessful onsets, he at last succeeded in getting one iron fast. Meantime, Gabriel, ascending to the main royal masthead, was tossing one arm in frantic gestures, and hurling forth prophecies of speedy doom to the sacrilegious assailants of his divinity. Now, while Macy, the mate, was standing up in his boat's bow, and with all the reckless energy of his tribe was venting his wild exclamations upon the whale, and essaying to get a fair chance for his poised lance, lo, a broad white shadow rose from the sea, by its quick, fanning motion, temporarily taking the breath out of the bodies of the oarsmen. Next instant, the luckless mate, so full of furious life, was smitten bodily into the air, and making the long arc in his descent, fell into the sea at the distance of about fifty yards. Not a chip of the boat was harmed, nor a hair of any oarsman's head, but the mate forever sank. It is well to print the size here, that of the fatal accidents in the sperm whale fishery, this kind is perhaps almost as frequent as any. Sometimes, nothing is injured but the man who is thus annihilated, oftener the boat's bow is knocked off, or the thigh board, in which the headsman stands, is torn from its place and accompanies the body. But strangest of all is the circumstance, that in more instances than one, when the body has been recovered, not a single mark of violence is discernible, the man being stark dead. The whole calamity, with the falling form of Macy, was plainly described from the ship. Raising a piercing shriek, the vile, the vile, Gabriel called off the terror-stricken crew from the further hunting of the whale. This terrible event clothed the archangel with added influence, because his credulous disciples believed that he had specifically foreannounced it, instead of only making a general prophecy, which any one might have done and so have chanced to hit one of many marks in the wide margin allowed. He became a nameless terror to the ship. Mayhew having concluded his narration, I have put such questions to him, that the stranger captain could not forbear inquiring whether he intended to hunt the white whale, if opportunity should offer. To which I have answered, aye. Straightway, then, Gabriel once more started to his feet, glaring upon the old man and vehemently exclaimed, with downward pointed finger, Think, think of the blasphemer, dead, and down there. Beware of the blasphemer's end. A hap stolidly turned aside, then said to make you, Captain, I have just bethought me of my letter bag, there is a letter for one of thy officers, if I mistake not. Starbuck, look over the bag. Every whale ship takes out a goodly number of letters for various ships, whose delivery to the persons to whom they may be addressed, depends upon the mere chance of encountering them in the four oceans. Thus, most letters never reach their mark, and many are only received after attaining an age of two or three years or more. Soon Starbuck returned with the letter in his hand. It was sorely tumbled, damp, and covered with it all, spotted, green mold, in consequence of being kept in a dark locker of the cabin. Of such a letter, Death himself might well have been the post-boy. Can Street not read it? cried Ahab. Give it me, man. Aye, aye, it's but a dim scrawl. What's this? As he was studying it out, Starbuck took a long cutting spade pole, and with his knife slightly split the end, to insert the letter there and in that way, handed to the boat, without its coming any closer to the ship. Meantime, Ahab holding the letter, muttered, Mr. Har, yes, Mr. Harry, a woman's penny hand. The man's wife, I'll wager, I, Mr. Harry Macy, ship Jeroboam. Why it's Macy, and he's dead. Poor fellow, poor fellow, and from his wife, Side me you, but let me have it. Nay, keep it thyself, cried Gabriel to Ahab, thou art soon going that way. Curses throttle thee, yelled Ahab. Captain may you, stand by now to receive it, and taking the fatal missive from Starbuck's hands, he caught it in the slit of the pole, and reached it over towards the boat. But as he did so, 
The oarsman expectantly desisted from rowing, the boat drifted a little towards the ship's stern, so that, as if by magic, the letter suddenly ranged along with Gabriel's eager hand. He clutched it in an instant, seized the boat knife, and impaling the letter on it, sent it thus loaded back into the ship. It fell at Ahab's feet. Then Gabriel shrieked out to his comrades to give way with their oars, and in that manner the mutinous boat rapidly shot away from the Pequod. As, after this interlude, the seamen resumed their work upon the jackets of the whale, many strange things were hinted in reference to this wild affair.